Hi everyone, it's Gail Davis, and guess what we are going to talk about today? Paint! <laughs> and look, <laughs> we have my lovely friend, yeah, she's a friend, um, well she has become a friend, she doesn't know it, <laughs> she is the Director of Color Marketing for Guess Who? Sherwin-Williams. So, um, I'm super Hi, excited. I'm <laughs> Welcome too. Soon. Hi Gail, how are you? It's good to talk to you again. I know, and this time we finally I actually get to see each other in person. So before we get started, I just want to share something. Can, oh, can, can you see? I can see it. Okay, Sherwin-Williams color of the year. Now I got the box, people, yes. but I didn't open it up. So I'm going to open it now and let's see. So while what you're opening it, so, so why that's important, right? We, we announced our color of the year today and oh, okay. we, sent, we sent Gail a very special box. And some other folks, but but Gail, most importantly, um, to tell the story of this beautiful color, which is ta da. Okay, wait, wait. This box is taking forever. Hold on. I'm too nervous. I'm too nervous. It's like Christmas morning. <gasps> Urbane brown yeah. bronze. Oh bronze. my God. This is beautiful. It is oh my God. Gorgeous. So you got a paint chip? Yes. Beautiful. Oh my God. Love so it. beautiful. People. See? All right, spill the beans, sister. What? Why this color? What happened? So Ooh. we we're going to talk a little bit about our color forecast here in a little bit. But one of the things that comes out of that annual color forecast is a color of the year. And what does that mean? What is like? What's the color of the year symbolized to us? Well, it's like one color, one thing that's going to resonate in design trends moving forward. Um, so we've talked about navy in the past couple of years. We've talked about warmer neutrals. We've talked about Terracottas, one of our years was cavern clay, which was beautiful. Um, and really we're seeing a lot of momentum around browns. Um, right. So I love this particular shade because- It, it is has, beautiful. Yes, that like bronze cast has like a silver undertone to it um, that really makes it like luxurious and sophisticated. Hence mm -hmm. the bronze versus like just a, a brown. Right, um, right. We haven't, we haven't seen brown in a while. You know, it's kind of been a, an unsung neutral in the gray, in the gray avalanche that's been the last 10 years. <laughs> what are you talking about with the gray? Oh <laughs> my gosh, right? But you know, I love this color, right? Because we're not about to tell our clients to, you know, chuck their gray rooms or their gray furniture because it's, it's everywhere. Right. This color is a, it's a bridge color. It's beautiful. I love it with like bone whites and creamy neutrals and grays. And it just kind of ties everything up with a nice little bow. It's beautiful. Do you have a favorite palette? within our color mix palette. Absolutely. Oh, it's so hard. They're like my kids. I love them all. <laughs> Which one is your favorite child? <laughs> <laughs> Sanctuary. So the, the, the color palette this Urbane Bronze comes from um, is okay. all about like really organic neutrals and they're super beautiful. It's about creating sanctuary spaces, super nature, natural influences, organic. Um, I think coming out of this insane, well, not even coming out of it, in the midst of this COVID craziness, mm -hmm. um, we all need a chance to just decompress. And, um, you know, color can help do that. So that's really, that was the inspiration by him, the Sanctuary Palette. Oh my goodness. I really, really love it. Okay. So let me get to my questions. People, if you have questions, just pop them in and I will ask Annie at the end if you have anything for Sue. Here's the thing that people don't know. You went to school for interior design. I did, I did. So I, I like to say that I tripped over this job at Sherwin-Williams. Like I had no idea what color marketing was in 1998 when I was a, in art school. And um, so I got this internship kind of out of the blue and it, I, I haven't looked back and I'm going on 22 years here with the company and it's been an incredible journey and super interesting and very different than a traditional design job. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that it's being an interior designer has helped inform how I do this job well. For instance, like whenever you see we publish a color, you know, mm -hmm. it's about, it's got to be a beautiful color for a wall. It's not just some random selection. I really take a lot of time to make sure that um, designers and homeowners are actually going to want to see that color up on the wall, not just like some trend color that, that makes no sense. So um, that's really kind of like my mantra uh, mm -hmm. and how I want to deliver um, just good information for designers. No, that's really cool. Now, I know you went from design to paint and you love color. What's amazing that people also don't know about you is 
you do paint a lot in your home. I so do. you you walk the walk and talk the talk. Like you I know do. how this will go on the wall and you have ideas. What what is the biggest job you painted in your home? So I'm currently repainting on my kitchen cabinets. We had talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And I was mm-hmm. starting to think about it. Well, I like jumped in head first <laughs> and um, it looks amazing, right? It's worth it. Like it's, it's for me. And I think because we're designers, we're doers, you know, we right. want to like, solve problems and use right. our hands and like get immersed in something. And so having a marketing job, sometimes you don't always get to do that. <laughs> and so I find a lot of enjoyment and I get out a lot out of painting because it's such a quick, um, easy way to transform a room. And I, it's like a test run, right, on all the colors that I talk about. So sometimes mm-hmm. I'll, I'll think about talking about a color and I'll paint it in a room and it's got weird undertones or it's just not, it looks strange or, or looks amazing. Like right. I like to have that information because I want to be a good resource for designers. Um, Absolutely. Designers are like my, you know, my heartstring because that's right. where I came from. So to me, that's super important. No, that's really cool. Um, and it's okay. I'm probably going to be a little bit chauvinistic here. It's cool because you're female, and it's right. important because I always feel like women look out for other women, and 100%. we let each other know, hey, you don't want to do that, or hey, you want to do this, or you want to go this route. Um, and it was just really amazing to sit down and get a chance to speak with you because I learned so much about painting, <laughs> which is painting. something that I absolutely do not do. I will hire a person, right? Um, but I want. I really do want to learn. So. Um, just sharing. Now, question, what does this forecast say about the future of design and color and not just for next year, but for the next several years? So when we just like a little background about our forecast for those that aren't familiar, you know, we do this annually and our team gets together and we represent, you know, different segments of our business and geographies. So we cover, um, we have members from Latin America and Europe and Asia Pacific and and we cover architectural coatings and performance coatings and wood care and like all our, our segments and we get together and we workshop and it's usually like late January early February so we we were in North Carolina this year and it was a great meeting and we felt good about the direction and then the world caught on fire and COVID broke out <laughs> and it was like whoa, what are we going to do here? And the good news is um, the, the forecast didn't change. Like the stories, the design, the intention, the inspiration, everything was still there. And, and I feel like that um, is very compelling because it was the right storytelling. Like we're not right. picking these colors because they were right because of COVID. It right, was, right, right. It was the long-term story that we wanted to tell. But what I think has evolved from that is that design is going to see us through the next challenges that we have ahead of us. So designers inherently architects, we're problem solvers, right? We wanna make things better. We wanna build environments that people can live in and and whether that's residential design or commercial design or or whatever that might be, designers will, we've recognized there's a massive problem and now we'll adjust and we'll, we'll change things and we'll help change the world. And I think that's where design is like the unsung hero in many ways because we're like on the front lines of change. These are people's homes that we're creating new environments for. And, and now homeowners are looking for sanctuary spaces where they can yes. teach their kids and go to work every day and come home and unwind and disconnect <laughs> from their phones. Or maybe they go on technology and how is technology going to change? Like this yeah. world has just slammed together in a way that nobody, nobody could predict. And I do truly believe that designers are going to see us through this. We're going to be like the thinkers and the doers that take homeowners out of a super scary time mm-hmm. into something that's comfortable. So I'm excited to see, I'm, I'm, I'll say this, I'm optimistic about where we're going to go. Cause I think in a lot of ways, we're going to be better for this terrible, terrible agreed. tragedy, you know? Agreed. 100% agreed. It's funny now when I watch um, the news, when I do turn it on, it's funny how everyone's positioning themselves in their house to be in the right corner <laughs> with wow. like the right painting and the colors behind them. Where before, like if you looked a week before, like it probably was some drab color and it was just like thrown up. But now it looks like they're like, oh God, you got to come in here and paint. Exactly. <laughs> and they're they're all making it look amazing now. Secretly, Sherman Williams pretty much loves that. That's great. But like, yeah, you want to make sure your trim and your doors look great and things aren't banged <laughs> up and everything's like kind of ship shape, at least for that one little corner, right? Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just funny with that. Also, let's talk about lighting and painting because people mm-hmm. get that really confused 
what would you like people to understand between the two and how they really do go together? So lighting is a constant, uh, probably conundrum for, for designers, right? Because considering where you live in the world, um, what is the exposure of light coming into that room? You know, I've got a lot of Northern light and I live in Cleveland, so it's gray six, pretty much six months out of the year. You know, you paint gray in that room and it's just institutional and super boring and the light just dies. So I think considering natural lighting and where it comes into the room is super important in color selection, but also then what's your, um, What's your lighting inside the room? Are you, you know, do you have ambient lighting? Do you have overhead lighting? Are you just a lamp lover? Do you have, I mean, halogen lighting? Does anybody have that anymore? Maybe not, but like, you know, that's a different light than LED. And so there's just like this constant, um, like pendulum swing with color selection. So to me, and designers know this, the most important thing is getting the right sample into your space, whether you paint a swatch or get larger format color chips, um, pull, pull to multiple colors, maybe with just little variations so that you can make a final decision based on the light that's coming into the room. And I think that's the best way to kind of make the best choice for color. Yeah. Um, because I've run into people who they're like, wow, that gray is, it looks purple. Well, that gray looks green. I was like, it's the undertone. Like you should have really painted up a giant swatch and like let it live there yes. instead of picking something out of the fan deck going okay tell your guy to do that because now you're going to either have to do it over or your client's really not going to be happy about exactly. that <laughs> and there'll be like just one thing off about this spectacular room that just drives you crazy so it's worth doing a little bit of extra work i think in the front end to make the right choice no absolutely do you have a favorite color like I is there I do. So there's a color, um, and we've talked about it before, it's called Anonymous. So it's oh, actually yes. Yes, just yes, a couple yes. shades lighter than Urbane Bronze. So it's this, ah, it's this warm gray. Sorry. Uh -huh. it's, um, it's life. It's real life, people. This is what we do here. Yeah. <laughs> You'll hear my dogs barking in a minute, I'm sure. I love it. Um, <laughs> so uh, like, I don't know, 15, well, maybe not so long ago, maybe 10 years ago, I actually painted the exterior of our home. We have an old historic home outside of Cleveland. <laughs> And it is beautiful, beautiful. It's just such a rich, um, it's almost, it's not brown, it's warm gray. And then um, like slowly people in my neighborhood started painting the same color on their house. So like I knew it was a really, really, really good color. So I've now used it not only on the outside, I use it on the inside of my house. Um, it's just to me like a, like a showstopper, it's beautiful. That's cool. Um, something else I wanna talk about that I feel like designers get wrong sometimes is that they just, when they specify a paint, they don't really specify. They think they are and they just go, I want eggshell or, right. you know, I want flat. What's the problem in doing that? So sheen is super important. And I think it's important as well as like product specification. So designers, mm -hmm. and I think designers now, I think we've turned a corner. It's not just about color selection. I think a lot more designers are really interested in the product and like the features and benefits. So um, for instance, selecting a, a paint that's going to look great in a kitchen with like smudgy fingers and tomato yeah. sauce splashing and all those things. If you use a low end paint, that's not going to look great long term. Whereas it's worth the investment. Um, you know, a little bit more at the beginning of a project to spec a better quality paint that's going to live long and you can wipe it down, you can wash it. I mean, scrub, like there's, you know, much like with fabric, there's double rubs and texture rubs. Right. The same sort of thing with paint, right? So the higher the quality of the paint, the more durability and finish um, technology is in there. So beyond just a good quality paint, selecting the right sheen is really important. And I have like a couple um, hard and fast rules. For the most part, an eggshell finish, or um, we've got a couple categories, eggshell or satin, mm -hmm. it's gonna have a little bit of a sheen to it. So there's gonna be a little higher performance. So you'll be able to wipe it down a little better. Um, you know, it's good for like over, um, like really heavy traffic rooms. I live in a super old house and I have mm -hmm. plaster walls and my walls do this. So I tend to <laughs> yeah. like dead flat. Same. Yes. So I don't want to see any reflection on my walls or my ceiling. I want the color to be the truest expression of it without any glare. So I love flat paint, but it gets dirtier quicker. So okay. that's probably why I repaint so much, maybe. <laughs> um, you know, we've seen a huge trend in super high gloss finishes. And, you know, mm -hmm. the higher the gloss level, the more durable the surface. So that's why you see shine on furniture, doors, trim, because those finishes really restrict the, um, the impact on the substrate. 
Do you have any paint that you would recommend for residential that could possibly be commercial for like super high traffic areas, like if people have kids and dogs that run up and down and just get really crazy, um, that doesn't like smudge or show, like it's, it's super forgiving. Yeah, so our Emerald design, our, our Emerald series, and I think there's, uh, there's maybe three product lines within that, like sort of a, a family of brands. Um, Emerald is our like tried and true wall paint. It's so great. Emerald trim urethane, mm -hmm. getting that right. That is what I paint on trim and doors. It's super durable and it's water-based. So it's really easy to use. It's gorgeous. And that's what I'm painting my cabinets in my kitchen with. And I, it, the finish looks great. I don't have a sprayer. I'm not doing anything super professional. I just have a nice brush and it's like almost perfectly, you don't even see any brush marks, almost. Which is remarkable, right? <laughs> that is. It's great. Um, and then there is another, um, what's my other emerald product? Emerald for walls. Oh, there's an exterior product, which is actually very cool. And I think we've talked about it. It's what I painted my shed with. It's called Rain Refresh. And oh. it's got almost like, um, you know, the windshield wiper uh -huh. that you put on. So the, the water wicks off it. Well, it's got that <laughs> same type of technology. That's not what's okay. in it. But um, rain um, doesn't, it beads up on the surface and washes down. So it's like a self-cleaning product. So that's super cool for exteriors. So like, if you think of like splashbacks, so say you paint your brick white, mm -hmm. right? And then you put it next to brand new mulch or your garden bed and it rains, that backsplash splashes up on your white brick. This right. product will rinse right off in the rain. So it's like a super cool technology that you would think like, well, of course products have that, but that's, it does that with flat finish, shiny finish, whatever you have. Um, the technology is inherent in that project, in that product to do that. So I think that one is super cool. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going round and round. It's okay. Uh, we talk a lot. This is how you and I do anyway. We just go down the rabbit hole of paint because you're just so informative. So this Emerald product line, it's got like, I don't even know. I'm sure my product guy is going to murder me for saying this. It's got almost like elasticity. So uh -huh. it's like goes on super smooth. The finish looks like velvet. It's super beautiful, but it really covers and coats. It's, it's like a, a paint and primer in one. So you can kind of eliminate that step because of the high performance of the product. Like to me, it's a no brainer. It's, it's what I use all the time. And then there's a couple other sort of in that category. Um, cashmere is like, as the name would indicate, it's a really beautiful finish. Mm -hmm. um, I don't always use that in high traffic though, because I think, I feel like it's not as durable as Emerald. So where would you put that one then? Like in a vertical surface, maybe as an accent wall, or I like, I wouldn't put it in a hallway. I would maybe put it in a bedroom or I'd okay. maybe put it in a, you know, a, a foyer or a living space that you're not in all the time. Um, or not, you know, not super right. high traffic. Right, right, right. No, that's super important. Um, cause I did a commercial space and like within two weeks, like there were smudges and all. And I was like, what is going on? And then we had to redo it and I got it right this time. So Good. we're going to be a little bit shady here. All right. right I'm going to be a little bit shady here. Yes. Big box stores and their paint. Why do people get them? Why for me, I know people really don't understand paint but I feel like I wouldn't go to the big box store because I feel like it wouldn't last. And I know I'm a paint snob. Right. So I would always be like, you know, get something quality top of the line that you don't have to revisit. Tell me about what you think about box store painting. So, so I think for a certain segment of the population, it's super convenient. It's about convenience. You go to get your drywall and your lighting and a rug and your paint and you just like get it all <laughs> at one time. Right. Put it in your cart and you go and, and those people are really satisfied with it. But for me and designers and professionals and like, you know, homeowners that are willing to spend a little bit more and get mm -hmm. a better quality outcome, it's worth going to a specialty retailer. I mean, you don't, I don't know about you, but I don't oftentimes shop for shoes at a big box, right? I go to a specialty retailer because it's the shoe I want because it fits my right. foot. It's right. the money that I spend. I like the right. experience. I think you could make the case that um, Sherman Williams as a specialty retailer has that same experience. It's not just about the color and the product. It's about talking to your local paint rep or your store manager that really knows like the benefits and the features of a product that you don't, you just don't always get that customer service at a big box. And I think Agreed. that's a really important Agreed. difference. Mm -hmm. So whether you're going to do it yourself, whether you're going to hire a pro, um, 
you know, pros use Sherman Williams for a reason. And, and that's one of them is that the service is just like best in class. Well, I told you before about my local Sherwin Williams store in Maplewood. And when I walk in there, you can ask them anything and they know it. Um, they ask a lot of questions to make sure like they're giving you the best product for your space. And there are my dogs. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, it's just someone walking past. It makes me crazy. <laughs> or is my husband coming in? Anyway, so I love when I go there because they're so amazing and they're just so thoughtful and they really know their product. And that's super important to me because I wanna walk in, I don't wanna show another paint color from a, a different company and go, can you do this? I wanna walk in and get that person's paint because, you know, like I wanna get Sherwin Williams paint because then I know exactly what I'm getting instead of some mixed. Exactly. Right, right. I mean, I, I think I can, can I talk about other brands when I'm on? Sure, let's go for it. We're, listen, it's just Look, you and I here. With I shop friends. Nordstrom because their customer service is ridiculously great, right? I love oh. the app. I love going into the store. Like it's worth it for me, right? Right. You make the extra step to, you know, not go convenient shopping, go to Nordstrom. I love it. Everybody, like my whole family does. And, and retail paint is the same way, right? Why, would, why wouldn't you want to go to the place that's got that specialty um, signature service to make the experience just much better. Um, so for me, it's, it's like a no brainer. No, cool. So I see there are some, looks like there are some questions. Annie, my love, do we have questions for Miss Sue? Uh, yes. Kathy Miller wants to know, so what color you painted your cabinets and what sheen? So I wish I could tell you something a little more sexy than the fact that I painted them extra white. I only did that because all the trim in my house is extra white. So I didn't want to introduce a new white into the mix because I would then had to go be, repaint the whole house and I didn't want to do that. Um, so I'm doing my walls, um, I'm doing white on white. So I'm going from charcoal and cherry, which was so dark to um, flat, flat, emerald flat on my emerald designer edition, flat on my walls and emerald trim urethane on my cabinets and semi-gloss. And it looks stunning. Like I've, I wish I, I wish I had pictures that I could share my screen and show you guys. But it looks, it looks like a new kitchen. It's awesome. It's and you did it just her. No, I'm not <laughs> done yet. It's taking forever, but it will be perfect. And people, by the way, she doesn't use uh, painters tape. She can paint without painters tape. That's how I good can. she is. <laughs> white on white though makes that a little easier because I'm just like slapping it on and it looks awesome. Annie, we have any other questions? Um, yes, Channel Labor wants to know um, if you could speak to the difference between the effect of painting baseboards slash moldings the same as walls versus a white or contrasting a color. Contrast. I love that monochromatic look. I think it looks <sighs> super modern. It does. So like even if you use like a mid-tone, so a little darker value, I mean, it is like to me the ultimate in sophistication, particularly if you have some weightier baseboards and, and trim and crown, but you can also get the same as effect if you have, you know, less profile, like lower profile. I'm looking at, <laughs> looking here in this commercial space at like, what's interesting in here? Nothing. Um, so I love that look. And I think, I think it's what you want to achieve. If you want like a Scandinavian, simple, modern look, painting trim the same color as your wall is a, is a great way to like convey that minimalistic approach. If you have spectacular trim and you know, you're in a historic home, sometimes it's nice to create that contrast and use the trim and the wall color and separate them as different elements. That's kind of what I have in my house because I have really nice trim uh, being an old house. So yes. it's, it's really pretty. Yeah, my house is 100 years old. When we first moved in, it was like all dark brown. And so I just told my guy just to paint it like this white, like this yellow, white, whatever, just because I wanted to see one where the sunlight was going to be because the house was so dark. And two, I just wanted to make it happy for a yeah. little while because yeah. it was so sad. And I did the molding, everything. And I was like, I fell in love with doing that. And I just never turned back. <laughs> well, and I think what's, you know, like, honestly, I, this is so not a lie. I paint colors all the time. Like my husband will go out to like the home center to get lumber and he comes back and I've got a paintbrush and I'm painting rooms. I'm like, just leave me alone. I'm like, this is going, I'm going to paint this dining room black today. He's like, okay. Um, and so what is refreshing about 
light, whiter spaces is that your mm -hmm. furnishings, you like really recognize the beautiful things that you bring into your home. So I do love how light colors can just like let your other furniture shine and it's mm -hmm. not about the wall color. Like I'm looking at the cupboard behind you, you know, it's beautiful. And if you have a darker wall color, you don't always see that, you know, you right. don't always notice that. So that's what I'm loving about a white on white kitchen. It's like oh. a clean slate. I might paint a color, you know, in six months when I get tired of the white on white, but for now I needed a, like a break. I needed a palette break from all the dark that I had. And the cherry. And the cherry. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that to you. I'm going to say this to designers who are probably like, Sue, why did you put cherry in there? It was 15 years ago and I made a deal with my husband. I said, I will give you 10 years of this cherry and then I'm painting it. Well, it's now 15 and I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with that wood. So. Uh, I see you like we're getting a lot of questions in there. What's the next one, Annie? I see it keeps popping up. <laughs> the numbers. Um, we have another one from Courtney Ferry. Um, if you're painting a ceiling that has texture in an old house, mm -hmm. is it better to go with a finish that's more flat to hide the texture? Yes, 100% agree with that. You don't want to see, like, sometimes you don't, you don't have the budget to redo a ceiling, obviously, um, or take the knockdown down. So the flatter you paint it, the less reflection and, and the flatter it'll seem. So, you know, eliminate all shine on the ceiling if you can, and you have that texture. Ceilings, I felt. Um, this is a little more technical, um, but Julie Nelson wants to know what type of paint do you recommend for kitchen cabinets that are porous? Porous, like um, almost like a knotty pine, like a soft wood, or um, can she clarify that a little bit? And I can, even if I can't answer that, I can follow up and get um, our technical team to give you a good recommendation. The product I used, Emerald Trim Urethane, is such a rock star. I, I would, I would imagine it would be the same product. Uh, but yeah, if we could get some, Annie, if we could get more information on that, that would be helpful. Yeah, Julie, if you want to clarify, you can type back into Q and A, and I will, um, I will look for it. Okay, what else we got? Uh, Who else we got? Daniel wants to know if you get your inspiration for the forecasting for forecasting color from any cities around the world, or just in general, where you get your, um, you find your most influence. Yeah, so I would love to tell you that we had tons of travel this year that inspired us, but we didn't. Thank you, COVID. Um, but yes, usually it's, um, we'll go to all the design shows. We go to Europe, uh, which is an amazing opportunity. That's one of the great things about this job. And um, we've got a lot of influences from our Latin America team. So they bring in forecast reports from Brazil, Mexico City, Ecuador, El Salvador. Um, so I feel like our goal is to create a forecast that's very global, um, not just US based. You know, design in Vancouver can be wildly different, not wildly different, but different enough from North America that I want the, the forecast to just kind of live globally. Um, so we try, what else was an inspiration? It's always New York. I feel like I'm a broken record. It's always New York City. Um, I get I, recently the sort of like the California vibe, um, sort of that like desert bohemian, sort of like casual living has been really inspiring to me because I just think as neutrals are warming up, I'm seeing that as a definitely a source of inspiration. So I like that. I like a lot of the monochromatic exteriors that I'm seeing out there, white and black and bronze all playing together. Um, so I've gotten, um, that's in, definitely influenced our reports. Um, what else recently? Ralph Lauren turning a hundred. I love that like not not Ralph Lauren turning 100. I mean, no, the, I'm thinking of the company. I was like, he's not even. No, yeah, it's not I, 50. Is it 50 years of Ralph Lauren home and 100 years of Bauhaus? Okay. <laughs> That's like right. <laughs> yes, yes. But like, you know, you go back to 1995 right. advertorials from Ralph Lauren and they're still so similar to what's there now. They're like classic and timeless. So I love that like, like that snippet of Americana design. Um, what else am I loving? Definitely the nostalgic look back. So a lot of the trend forecast that in, in this year's trend forecast, we talk about how classic design is influencing us moving forward. And I think there's a whole big conversation around nostalgia and the importance of that concept in design. So what does that mean to me? It means that we're looking back to design styles that are familiar, that are safe, that there's a sense of security because we've seen them before and we know the beauty of that aesthetic. And that is kind of informing how we're going to look at things in the future. Um, and so, you know, from, from product development to car design, we're seeing sort of that retro 
look back in forming new design. And I think a lot of that is security and safety, you know? Oh, absolutely. I could completely see that. Completely see that. A lot of um, inspiration for me is definitely from the past and like putting a little twist on it. A twist, it's like just, a modern vibe to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. There's something like comfort, especially lately. I've been nostalgic for my grandparents' home. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so when I go back, I'm like, oh, but it's always like I'll take away something to just bring it and make it fresher for now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your interpretation of it. Yep. Yeah. So, oh, wow. The questions keep coming in. Who else is asking? Annie? <laughs> Julie wrote in again and she said pickled wood. Oh, oh, say that one more time. It cut out just a, just a little bit. A pickled wood. So pickled is like that finished new, are you familiar with what that is, Gail? Mm -hmm. um, so I would say you can just do a, a sanding of that finish, right? Because it probably has a pretty, um, uh, not a thick polyurethane coating on it, but usually that, that pickled finish from the probably 90s has like a finish, a strong surface to it. So I would lightly sand that. And then um, you can either select like a, a primer or use like emerald trim urethane without a primer and just put a couple coats on. And I think you'd be amazed at the difference. Um, you don't have to do anything particularly different to that surface other than just color up, cover up that color. You know, we are, we are seeing, it's so funny. We're seeing a little of that look, that pickled look, mm -hmm. but the new term is fumed. So it's fumed wood as if it had like a, a gray finish to it. So it's right. kind of like that whitewashed aesthetic, but it's not so pink, you know, pinkled. pinkled right, 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 right. right. Um, so that's kind of a new trend in furniture design. So just so you know. So I have a question before you ask one, Annie. You said you painted your house how outside. How long did that take? I did not. No, I hired somebody to do that. Oh, okay. Because I, I was, I'm sitting here thinking about, I'm like in my house. I was like, there is no way in hell. No, no. I would have <laughs> my house. fallen off the ladder and killed myself. <laughs> no, that was not happening. <laughs> no. Hired okay, Annie. <laughs> Back to the people. Who has a question? <laughs> Um, Gina Foley wants to know, or she's looking for a great navy color to paint a wood console piece of furniture. Ooh. And she's so have, wondering if she should use the Emerald series that you were talking about before. Okay. So that's a whole new product line, which I am obsessed with. And that was created uh, for designers. Quite honestly, like it's an amazing new product, but the colors were created for designers. So from the navy that's in that card is stunning. And it's, it's my favorite but I would say uh, it's, it's like really a true Navy, but the colors in our color snap system. So like, if you're familiar, Naval um, anchors away, hail Navy in the Navy. Um, I would say my, for furniture, Naval is beautiful because it's got a little sparkle in it. There's a little like brightness in the undertone. So especially when it's painted on furniture, it looks um, really like jewel tone. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, anchors away is much more muted so it's almost got like a it sounds obnoxious but like a black undertone to the navy so it's really right. dark and kind of murky mm -hmm. um, so if you're if you're going for that vibe um, I think that's a great choice if you want to use the new designer edition series which I love and recommend um, that color oh god it's so new I forget the name Mar maritime sea mariner I'll follow up in the chat and I'll respond on that color, exactly what that color name is. It's stunning. It's like our truest, happiest Navy. So I love that one. So I would recommend that one. Okay, Annie, I'm gonna take three more questions. <laughs> okay, Diana Greaves um, says, I have a client who doesn't want layers and layers of paint on her new plaster walls. Is there any detriment to having multiple layers? Can the top color be, be, top color be impacted by what's underneath even with the use of a primer? Um, this is a great question. So on most paint can labels, there's a recommended surface application. Some products are fine in one coat. They like seal and cure. Our Emerald Designer Edition, which is our newest product, which no lie is stunningly beautiful. You need two coats because it, the surface is like, like, like perfection. I'm not kidding. It's totally worth it. So even if your client is um, would really like it to coat in one, I would say um, go by the recommendation on the back of the can for the best possible application, even with a primer. And some of the higher end products, you don't even need a primer. So if you want to do two coats of Emerald Designer Edition, the surface is, is really perfect. It's weird. I know it's like 
it feels like it's just paint, but the difference um, you can t absolutely tell. Wow. You make um, me want polish. to go <laughs> um, Polish Steamer wants to know, do you like quarter round painted trim color or stained floor color? <gasps> I like painted. I do like painted. That's such a good question. That is such a designer question and I love it and I totally paint the quarter round and and I like get real low and I like have my teeny brush and so I don't get it on the floor and I love that look. I just think it's like um, you know do you wear dark shoes and light socks and light pants or do you use dark you know what I mean like right, right, right. and I want the wall to look taller. Absolutely. Oh there's three more questions. Okay. Every, I mean, like, I've never seen this many questions, so we're going to rock with it. So I'm <laughs> like, let's awesome. go. Awesome. Let's go. Um, I got time. He wants to know, what's the process to paint over sheetrock walls painted in oil 30 years ago? Oh. I used a primer <laughs> and water-based paint, and the paint is peeling off the walls. Yeah, that's not good. I think I'm going to have to, Annie, I'll follow up with you on these, like, specific questions. We've got this guy at Sherwin-Williams. His name is Rick, Rick Watson. He is the genius of all product information. So I want to ask him um, for a specific recommendation because he probably has something more than I can share with you. So if that's okay, I'll follow up with you after this chat. Yeah, of course. I'll, I can connect him with, um, with Gail. Okay. Go ahead. What else we have? Um, she has a second part to the question. <laughs> um, how does one create crisp lines if you want to do color block? The paint, the paint bleeds under the tape. So there's a couple little tips that <laughs> we've, we've perfected over, not we, I mean, influencers and people at Sherwin. Um, so if you lay a line down with tape, right, you mark it off, you match it, um, and then you, you can take like almost like a little wallpaper roller or a little wall roller and roll that edge so that it's really crisp. And then you take a brush, you know, if there's my wall, you take a brush and you kind of feather in the color on the edge of the tape and then not don't roll it. So as soon as you apply pressure and roll the edge of the, the color, it, it seeps under the tape. So if you feather in your edges, roll in the center and then peel it back, usually your edge is super perfect. Um, and we found that that is like the best way to achieve a crisp line. Um, I think there's a tutorial, which I can share after this on Sherwin.com from like our project center that shows like specific instructions. And I find that that's worked well. And I've tried it and it does, it's worked for me. I hate doing stripes, so they're really hard. <laughs> no, we had that discussion because you said lining them up oh, is a it's problem. So yeah, it's hard. It's cute when it's done, but it's hard work. <laughs> yeah, well, I told you my debacle when I did that. I accidentally went into the wrong stripe and painted it. I was like, no! And then oh, I had to paint over. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know why this seems so easy. And right. it was just, it was too much. And then I was like, oh, I got all the lines straight. And as I went around the room and Look like I was like, eh, eh, eh. Oh, no. totally. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, but totally. that will be painted over soon, people. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Annie. I see one more. Okay, last one is um, from Joanne. She wants to know which product should she use for a black high gloss interior door? So our new Emerald Designer Edition, we have high gloss. It's a brand new product. I'm very, very excited about it. And um, so we can connect you with a if you have a local paint store that you love, you can go in and just get the high gloss um, paint color from them, or we can connect you with a designer account executive and they can get you more information. Um, and I can, after this, again, I'll, I'll send links and the chat of some further follow-up information. Okay, and then for me, the top five, five reasons we should always use Sherwin-Williams paint. So beyond color, I love our colors, but I think beyond color, it's about product performance. It's about customer service. Um, I think we have the best customer service in the industry. It's about availability. You know, we've got 4,900 paint stores across the nation, across the globe, but no, no, not even. It's across the nation and Canada. Um, so there's one in your neighborhood. True. For sure. Um, I love our... Um, our love our forecast team. So I think our colors are, you know, super dedicated to designers. Um, I live for that market segment. It's super important to me. So, so we're consumers and homeowners, but I really love designers. So I think that's five. Is that five? I think so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, thank you so much. I really had a really good time with you as me always too, too. and so informative and please people, you have to go check out Color of the Year. That is really, once again, look, where's, here where's it is. I know, where's my box? Like there's some goodies that came in. <laughs> I know, we had some aromatherapy. There's oh my sweet, God, sweet loving it. Man, this, can Love you see it. it, people? I think we've got like a Spotify playlist. We put yes. Spotify. Yep, yep, yep. Like, like a sanctuary playlist that's adorable. Focus, miss. And then once again, look at that. <laughs> I love it's it's a I love dark, moody colors. They're so sexy. And I just feel like every time you walk into a room, into a space, like it hugs you. Well, hello. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's just a hug and it's just so grounding. It me. is. Yeah. So there's a lot of resources that are gonna be on our websites. We've got a microsite dedicated to the color. Um, we're at a photo shoot now. We're shooting a bunch of um, new rooms. So check back in with Sherma.com. And we're going to be on TV next week talking about it, though I won't be on TV. I'll be on a Zoom call on TV, but still, okay. it's fun. It's fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, just check out the color. You, uh, you'll love it. Urbane Bronze, I see. Paula asked a question. Urbane Bronze, I think the color is 7048. Well, I'll tell you right now. 7048. I dream Perfect. about those colors. I know them, I swear. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sue. Thank you Thanks, for joining guys. us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Shumek or Annie. It was so fun. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you both. Goodbye, beautiful people. Have a great day. <laughs>